Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of Tabletop Simulator. My name is Kasanis. Guys, in this video we're going to start to build our custom game. That's what we're going to do now. I hope after the last disappointing video that you went through and collected all of the assets you are going to need to be able to follow along and build your own game. All right, everyone. So let's get started. All right, guys, here we are inside of Tabletop Simulator. And all I did to get to this particular point within the video is create a single player server. I then closed off my game choice window. That left me with a table and a background as well as my options along the top and along the side. In today's video, what we're gonna be taking a look at is creating the table and creating the board. We're gonna take a look at those two things in this particular video. It's gonna be a relatively short video, I hope. Okay, so let's start off with our table. If you want to start off with your background, please go ahead. Remember UX guys, the background may play a very important part. It will, it definitely will play a part in player UX, all right? Your player's experience is gonna be based on everything they see, they smell, they touch, they feel, their environment, everything, all right? The background of your board is definitely part of UX. So choose something. You can upload pictures. Maybe we'll even talk about that a little bit later on. For now, I want to talk about the tables themselves. I can go into objects like we've seen previously, and I can choose my tables option. And if we take a look at the tables option, you can see that I have a number that are available immediately or no table at all. I've got a square table, a hexagon table, an octagon table, a round table, a poker table, a rectangle table, a round glass table, and finally the two custom, custom rectangle and custom square. For the most part, these tables are self-explanatory, right? I've got the square table up here right now. It looks like a square table. Awesome. Some of these look strange, but they might be what you're looking for. This is one of those glass tables. I can, you know, get the reflection from the, from the background. And again, that might be extremely important to you, right? I'm getting the reflection from my, my photo background. All right. If, however, let's go back to objects and tables, you, you can choose any table you want. If, however, you choose a custom table, this is where it's a little bit different. Instead of just being a simple table, we end up with this option to change something in the table itself. In fact, we're going to be changing what the players see inside of the table here. In this particular time, it's asking me for an image that's going to go into this, this area. If I choose an image, I don't really have anything set up for this, but let's just pick something. Let's uh, do I have anything in front side? All right. So let's say I pick, uh, it doesn't really matter. I pick Bulbasaur. Let's say I pick Bulbasaur. When I do so and I say select, it's going to offer me two choices, either local or cloud. And what it says right here is absolutely true. Local files will not work in multiplayer. If you are building this game as a multiplayer game, you must upload all of your images, all of your files must be uploaded to the cloud. All right, guys, something to take note of. If you're making a multiplayer game, upload it to the cloud. For now, I'm just gonna keep it local so I don't have to upload this again because I've already uploaded it once. I'm gonna import this and you're gonna see what happens. There it is. There's my card that has been slapped in the middle of the table. Obviously, that's a pretty bad card to have there, right? I wouldn't want that. That doesn't tell me anything. If you wanted to have a logo or something like that, you absolutely could. If you were, let's say, creating a Dungeons & Dragons game and you wanted to create a, your, your map to be available there, you absolutely could. But something you should remember is that it's going to take up geography, all right? It's filling this entire area. Uh, let's let's re-add this table. I'm going to go back to objects. I'm going to go to table, and I'll add the custom square this time instead. If I add the custom square table, and again, I import a particular image, let me go here, uh, let me go back one, let's just go up one here and find my actual board. Uh, what did I call it? I can't remember if I even put it here. I thought I did. Ah, oh, right here, board. Board version four. Let's say I decide to slap my board in here. All right, I'm gonna say select. I'm gonna keep it local so we can see it. And I'm gonna import it. And when I do, the actual board is going to be brought in and slapped on the table. Now you might think, wow, what a great idea. I don't have to actually build a separate board. I can instead just use the background of the table as my board itself. And if you do not require the geography for your table, you absolutely could. 
all right? If you don't require any additional geography, if you don't require uh, anything, you know, any space for your player to put stuff, if everything's going in their hands, for example, all you have on here is a number of different pawns or something like that or some dice, then absolutely you could do this for your board. All right, it's an absolute option. But if you had something more, like in the game that I'm going to create, uh, the Pokemon game, uh, I need space on my board to have a die, to have a number of different decks of cards, and that kind of thing. So ultimately, I'm not going to use a custom table for my particular game. All right? So in choosing whatever board or game, or excuse me, whatever table that you were looking for, make sure you take into account the player's UX, the, the UX for the player, the user experience. How are the players going to be able to interact with that board? Is that board set up properly and give them enough space? Okay, so for now, in my particular case, I'm going to stick with a rectangle table. After a lot of thought, I decided this was going to be the best solution I had. Okay, so for me, the rectangle table is how I'm going to go. You guys choose whatever, whatever table you'd like for your particular game. Okay, now the next step for me is to create our board. I'm going to create a board by going to, again to Objects. I'm going to go to Components, and I'm going to choose Board. Now again, you'll notice that we have a number of different boards that are available to us automatically. Backgammon, Checkers, Chess, Chinese Checkers, Go, and Reversi at the time of making these videos. I also have the Custom Board option. And in this particular case, I'm going to use that Custom Board option. Okay, so I've got that board, I've selected it, and now it's giving me the option to place it down somewhere. All right, I'm going to flop it down right there. Everywhere I click now is going to create a board. When I'm done, I can right click and it'll automatically disappear. It's now set in place. It's now asking me once again, just like with a table, for a, a URL or an image of some kind that I'm gonna add. I'm gonna click on here and I'm going to add my board version four. That is my good version. I'm going to select it. And once again, local or cloud, I wanna do it local here for me. You should do it if you're doing multiplayer game, you want to do it cloud. Bang and import. All right, and just like with the table, the board itself is automatically brought in. I can close this off for now. We can see that this board is currently available to us. All right, and I can't move it around. I'm trying to click it, I'm trying to move it around, and I can't do so. This board has been placed in the table and locked in place. Okay, if I want to be able to move this board somewhere other than where I placed it, I'm going to have to go to my toggles. I'm going to have to turn off lock. Anything can be locked. When you lock it to the table, it is stuck where you've placed it. You probably want to do that with your board once you've got it where you like it. In my particular case, I want to make sure that my board is relatively centered within my, my table itself so that all players have an equal amount of room. Ultimately, I'm going to have four players. One, two, three, four. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm ultimately going to have four players, so I want to make sure that everyone has an equal amount of room. Once I have my board where I like it, I don't want this board to be moved anymore. I'm going to right-click once again. I'm going to go to Toggles, and I'm going to sure, ensure that my board is locked in place. Now, with it locked, I can no longer pick it up. All right, I can no longer move that board. All right, awesome. The next thing we should really look at is setting it up so that we have the proper number of players around our table. So we've already discussed player options as far as where your players can sit are concerned. We discussed this when we talked about hands and being able to deal cards out to hands or setting up areas that players can see within the zones. If I take a look under my name, under Kasanas, I can see that change color is still available and I have all of the following areas available to me. I'm currently sitting at white, but I have enough spaces along here for players to kind of sit wherever they want. I've got a total of one, two, three, well, two times four, which is eight, plus the game master, which we talked about before, and the spectator. We're not gonna change spectator or game master, but maybe we don't wanna have our players be able to sit anywhere they feel like. Maybe we wanna have it spread out a little tiny bit. It's going to be up to you. You can leave these options available to your players. It's gonna be completely up to you. Later on, I'm gonna set it up so that I need some space over here. Uh, so maybe I want to reduce the number of player options I have. I'm gonna leave mine for now, but if you decide you want to reduce yours, you can simply go to zones, you can go all the way across to hands, and you'll see the different hands where the player's hands are located. If you want to remove something, you can hover over it and you can click. When you do, 
it removes the option to have a player sit in that location. And for me, that's probably pretty good. I probably don't want anybody sitting right here. Uh, uh, later on, I'm going to put my dice over here. I'm going to put my rule set over here. So I really want to kind of leave this space open and available. So removing that one is perfectly fine. You can go around if you wanted to, and you could reduce the number of player locations if you wanted to. It's up to you. All right. You'll notice now, if I click over here again, I no longer have the option to change to the yellow location. So that player has been removed. And later on, when I save this game, there's no longer going to be a player that's allowed to sit in that location. All right. All right, everyone. That is a pretty good place right now to leave our, our current game build. We've got ourselves our table selected, we've got ourselves our board built, and we've got ourselves our players' hands in the appropriate location. If you want to make any changes for your particular game, go ahead and do so, guys. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm excited to keep moving on, and next in the next episode, we're going to take a look at the creation of tokens. All right, everyone? I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up, and if you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. This is really for my students. I'm hoping everyone else out there is enjoying it. But if there's something else that you think that I should be talking about, if I'm not being clear in my method of teaching, please let me know. All right, guys? All right. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.